Hello and happy, happy Tuesday, my friends, my crafty friends here to join me today. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and super excited to have you here today with me in my studio to have a little bit of crafting fun. I have a cute little item for you today. It's just adorable. I think you'll like it. At least I hope you'll like it. All right, so so many things going on right now. So right now we have bonus days. I love bonus days. So for every $50 that you spend in the online store with me before shipping and tax, you earn a bonus days coupon, which you get to redeem in August. So I, the one thing I want to make sure you really know about this is that Stampin' Up! will email you a code or a email with multiple codes, depending on what your order is, um, with those codes to redeem. Hold on to those, save those, put those in a folder wherever you need to get back to them because you'll need those codes to redeem those credits in August, right? So don't forget that, very exciting stuff. And then uh, registration is going on for two events right now. One is Cultivated Creativity, which is my DIY paper crafting kit subscription program. Sneak peek behind me of our fantabulous projects we have this month, all featuring the Darling Details Bundle. Love it, love it, love it. Um, you could use any floral set that you have if you prefer not to purchase another one. Although this one's super cute. And the dyes. Oh my gosh, you're going to want those dyes. They're so darling, right? Ah, ha, ha, just funny. Um, so kind of doily-ish, um, or at least they give me a feel of a doily, right? Um, so that's going on now. You have till July 20th to sign up for that. It is a $39 uh, ship to you kit full of fantabulousness. So you don't want to miss out on that. Saves you so much time and money, right? Because we tell you exactly what you need. Um, there's a complete supply list. There's a PDF tutorial. I do a video overview of the projects to kind of give you some tips going in um, to that as well. So join us for that. And then the second thing is registration is open for our Makers Mojo, which is our online um, creative escape. So if you're Having, if you need a little bit of project inspiration, right? Some getting your mojo back, a little bit of paper crafting magic, you will want to join us for our Makers Mojo Creative Escape. It is an online event, so it's available globally. So anyone can join us and it runs over two days, July 27th and 28th. Let me look, make sure I'm saying the right dates. 28th and 29th. I was off a day. And our pre-event fun starts this Friday. So lots of chances to win prizes. So jump on in and register for that as well. Um, you can find links on my website. Uh, I've got an events tab that you can look at both of those options. Um, better yet, join my email list um, because they're the ones that are in the know on everything going on that I have going on. So join my email list. You get free PDF tutorials every month. They're fantastic. Um, so yeah, okay. Uh, you can always leave me a comment as well. If you need a link to something, I'm uh, happy to answer that. Let's jump over for our crafty fun today. Switch the video camera over. Good deal. Here we are. Turn that light off. And let's see if I can switch. I've got a setting that might make this a little bit clearer. So let's see if I can do that. I don't know if it'll matter. Oh, goodness, what have I done? Okay, I stopped the video. Let's try again. There we go, we're back up. I don't know what I did. All right, hey, Susan, so glad you're here today. Yes, I'm glad you're home and able to join today as well. Good morning, Jean, as well. Well, for me, it's lunchtime. It's earlier for you, you ladies, because you are over on the other coast, right? All right, so today's project is going to feature the beautiful balloons bundle. I love this one. It's so happy and festive. Um, so we're just going to use one stamp or sentiment out of this. And then we've pulled in the star die from this as well. So um, we are making today, let me show you, an adorable mini origami treat holder. So I've got a couple little chocolate treats in here. We've got Diva chocolates. You could put a Ghirardella couple Ghirardelli squares in there. I've also slid in a gift card, but it's this mini little origami treat bag. And I'm going to show you how to make this, this little guy. So fun, right? All right. Let me slide all this over. 
and we will get started. So if you're doing this along with me, you need a six by six piece of designer series paper. You could grab a piece of computer paper, right? Cut it to six by six and do the folds with me so you can get back to it. Or you could stop and start the video, pause it however you need to. I'm gonna take you through all the folds and we'll go a little bit slower than I do sometimes. Um, or if you need me to backtrack, let me know. I know there's quite a delay um, when we do our live video. So I've chosen a different uh, print from the designer series paper pack. So this is the bright and beautiful um, paper pack. And I love it. Love all the designs in it. I love the colors. It just makes me happy. So I think you could make these masculine or feminine, depending on how you wanted to do it. And I like this um, because yay. Oh my gosh, you can give a yay for anything, any occasion, right? Wouldn't this be fun to have um, to leave on a coworker's desk at work or give out to teachers when the kids head back to school? So you could start on these now and have them all ready by the time school starts in August. All right, I'm going to start off. I'm going to flip it upside down because I want the, the side facing outward down to start off with. And I'm going to fold this in half and line up my two corners. Now, we could pre-score all of this, but I decided not to do that. I'm going to do it all with folding. Makes it easy. All right, and then I'm going to give it a good crease with my bone folder. So I fold it in half. All right, let's open this back up and we're going to repeat that the other direction. Again, I'm going to line up those points. Hopefully get this nice and square. All right, and give that a good crease. All right, I'm going to open this back up. Now I need to fold this in, this point in to this center score line. So I now have a center point. So I'm going to fold this in just shy of that center point, and I want to give that a really good crease. Okay. I'm going to fold it in again a second time, and I want to come in just a little bit from that, from that fold line. So you can see that I've got a little bit of space, not a ton, but just a little bit. I don't want it to fight itself, so I want to clear that fold line. Okay, make sense? Let's rotate it and we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm gonna fold this one into the point, right into that fold line and give that a crease. And then I'm gonna fold it a second time. Get a hold of that guy and give this a nice straight fold as well. Now, if you're having trouble getting straight lines and that's concerning to you, you could always put this out on some grid paper and help that will help you get those straight. I am not too worried about it, right? So let's open this up. Actually, wait, do I leave this closed? No, I open this up. Sorry, I can't remember what I did, right? I'm gonna rotate this back the other way. Sorry, I'm kind of getting my, my head about me because I've, I've um, Kind of gotten a little confused. <laughs> okay, fold this in half. Sorry. And all my fold lines are going this way. So see how they're all folded? Those ones I just did on the side. So I'm going to fold this in half again. Now I want to take this side. I've got my center score line and then these two right here. Okay, so these are the first two on the other side of the center. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to fold this up. I think I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. I know I'm doing something wrong. I know I'm doing something wrong. Let me just take a look real quick. No, I'm doing something wrong. I just don't know what it is. All right, well, we're going to go with it and see what happens. If I, if I get it all messed up, I get it all messed up. We're going to do this. Give that a nice square fold. I've got something wrong, I'm just not sure what it is. And we're gonna do this side, same thing, and fold that up. I'm missing a fold somewhere that I'm that I'm not sure I'm gonna figure out, but we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, so now I've got those little uh, gusset, gusset sides right there going on that are gonna allow me to fold in this side. So I'm gonna fold this down. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. 
Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I know what I forgot to do. When I folded this in half, let me backtrack. Let's skip this side. Pretend I didn't do that. I need to fold this up to create the bottom of my bag. This is going to decide how deep the bag is. I'm going to fold this up first, backtracking a little bit, right? So it kind of looks like a little bit of a hat. But this is the depth of the bag is what's happening here. So you fold it up three quarters, half inch, an inch, whatever you want to do. Okay. And then I fold this. That's where I messed up. I was like, wait, I had a little wing. Now we can fold this. Got it? So let me do this on the other side as well. We can backtrack if we need to, if I've got everybody confused now. You're lost. Okay, let me go back. Okay, I'm going to unfold this. I'm going to go through the steps again really quickly. Let me open this all up. Okay, we folded it in half and gave it a good crease. Open it up. Fold it in half again and gave it a good crease, right? Okay, then we open it up. So we've got a fold here and a fold here. Then I'm gonna fold my point in and then fold my side up one more time. I'm gonna rotate it, fold my point in to the center and then fold my side. We want a little bit of a gap between those in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna unfold this again. And the side that's got all these folds is how I want this oriented, right? I've rotated it again. I'm gonna fold it back in half. And I've got all these fold lines going this up and down here. I wanna fold this up to create the bottom. And then I'm going to take these sides and I'm going to fold. So I've got a center score line and then a score line on each side of the center. I want to take this bottom edge and bring it up to that score line and give it a crease. And on the other side, same thing. Bring it up to that score line and give it a crease. Back with me. Apologies. I know I added the confusion in there. Okay. So now I'm going to open this up. And then we're gonna fold this. So I've got my bag is gonna come in like that. And I've made these gussets on the side here with my folding, okay? So I've got these in all four corners. Like this. I'm gonna fold these baby points on the sides down. Now you could adhere these in place if you want to. I did not find that I needed to. But what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to take these corners and I'm gonna fold them in. I'm gonna look on the outside because I wanna make sure that this lines up nicely. I'm gonna fold those in. I'm gonna give it another little crease. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So this should naturally give you a gusset in that corner. And maybe gusset's the wrong word, a corner to fold in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a little glue dot on this and, and put this together as I go. I prefer glue dots for this, but you could use liquid glue. You could use your stamp and seal. I just want to tack this in place. I'm just going to put a little glue dot right on this corner and slide that right in there. Okay? Make sense? I hope it does. And then if you want to put a glue dot on this outside portion as well, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I want this to stay closed. So I'm just going to do it. It doesn't matter really where. It's just going to hold that for me so I can get this nice straight edge. All right. So there's one edge. I'm going to repeat that on this other corner. Same thing. I want to fold that in. So let's add a glue dot to that one. Whoops. It's stuck to my take your pick. I'm going to fold that in. And then I want one on the outside as well. And we're going to repeat this on the other side so you'll have another chance to see what I'm doing. And again, you can always go back after the video and watch this. Skip my mistake. <laughs> right? All right. So that side is done. Rotate this and we're going to repeat this on the other side. So I've got this fold here, right? That's going to fold in in each corner. 
So my box is going to look something like that or my bag. All right. So let me get my glue dots. Let's tack those in place again. I'm going to put one on each side. You guys with me? Or have I totally got you lost? I got to do one side at a time. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do too much at once. All right, one side. Get a glue dot on the outside here. And then I'm looking to make sure that this is lined up on the side here. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other end. And that will finish the sides of our little box here. Bag, whatever you want to call it. It's a mini little treat bag. All right. Oops, I keep pulling it towards me. Apologies. All right, so that holds that in place. And then I've got these points that I need to fold down to give me the edge, the outer edge. And then I like to tack those in place with a glue dot as well, right? Just to kind of hold things together. And then let's do the other flap on the other side, rotating that. Ah, oh, you got it. Good, 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 good. I'm so glad. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now that I've got this bag all together, I can push my sides in and because of the different folds that I did, I've got the little side gusset right there. And this will fold up like a little shopping bag. So I'm just gonna push those fold lines in and it's gonna fold up like a little shopping bag. So let's go ahead and give this a nice good crease. So I love this. So you can make these and store them for when you're ready to use them. Is that cute? So now we just need to add handles and decorate it. So you don't have to put those glue dots on it if you don't want to. I yeah, I felt like I needed something to kind of hold it together. So that's that's why I did that. Okay, so now I've got two pieces that are a quarter inch. I, my cutting's not perfect. Quarter inch by three inches. Now, if this is too short for you, if you find when you make yours that you need it a little bit longer, waste a little paper and cut them a little bit um, a little bit longer, right? Three inches was fine for me. I think it's really, really cute. But if you need it a little bit longer, make it a little bit longer, right? All right. So I found this is so much easier to do if I run my bone folder along the paper. This softens the fibers, right? And allows the paper to be manipulated a little bit, right? And I love that it gives it a little curl to start off because that makes it so much easier to do. So I want the print on the outside versus the pink. So I'm going to put my glue dot on the outside of my handle because my handle is going to go inside my box. So I'm just going to grab a glue dot on each end of my handle. I got to stop pulling this towards me, right? You guys can't see if I do that. All right. So then I am just going to place this in inside my bag here and twist that around and put it on the other side. And I'm just going to give that a good push so those glue dots are in place. Now, I obviously did not measure that. I just stuck them on. But if you want to ensure that yours are the same on both sides, again, have your grid paper out so you can use that. Let me grab mine. I think I have a piece. I do. I had a reusable piece just right under here. So what I mean by that is you could lay this right down on your grid paper. Wow, I did... I'm pretty impressed with myself right now. I did pretty darn good because both of them came in a half inch. So you could spread it out a little bit more if you wanted your handles um, closer to the outer edge. You might need this a little bit longer to do that, but just kind of stick them in there. I don't stress out about little stuff like that, but um, if that bothers you, you got to do it right. All right, we're going to repeat this with the other handle. It's the same thing. I'm going to come in here and grab a glue dot. Whoops. I almost put it on the wrong side, on the front of the handle, on the front of the handle on the other end. Oh, good. You, I, you guys will watch it on the replay as well. Yes, you could totally do this with 12 by 12 paper if you wanted to. 
it kind of just works itself out, right? And so you could make a bigger version. So I think you could do any square size that you wanted to do if you wanted to make a bigger one. But I love the little mini, the mini size of it. Just, I don't know, there's something about it that just makes you happy when something's tiny, right? When you have a miniature version of something. So super cute. And so this particular paper has more of the green yellow and then a little bit of the blue pink on that side. Either one is fantastic. So now all we have to do is decorate it. And I love this. So this one I made a little wider, right? The way I folded it. I don't know if you can see the difference. This one's narrower and this one's a little bit wider. You can see it better from the side, right? It's all dependent on that bottom fold where I messed up and forgot it. Mm -hmm, that's the one. And this is great because it fits a gift card. You can just slide one right down in there. And a couple of little chocolates, right? Who wouldn't want a couple of chocolates in there? little gift. So I like these little Godiva chocolates. So you can slide them. You probably could even get one more in this one since I made it bigger. Um, but it's so cute. All right. So let's decorate the front. Can't wait to see what you guys do with this. Okay. So I used, and I did not grab them, the stylish shape styes. You guys know which ones I'm talking about. Let me grab them. They're, they're always handy in my craft room. I actually, it's a set of dies I leave out on my table because I'm constantly pulling them out of my, my storage area because I use them all the time. So these are stylish shapes. You've seen me use these a gazillion times and you will continue to see me use them until they're no longer available to order because I love them. So I die cut that white out of a scrap of white with this small banner here, okay? Now we're gonna do a little bit of masking today. So the stamp sentiment that I chose says, yay you. And it's it's stacked on top of itself. Um, I only wanted yay. I didn't want the you on there. So you've got a couple options that you can do for masking. This particular word, I felt like it was super easy to just really look down on the ink pad. And we've got a little raised surface from the pad um, to the edge of the container. So I felt like it was super easy to ink up and just get the yay. However, that is not always the case with every sentiment. So let me show you another option. So if you have some household tape, right? You can use any household tape. I like to use painter's tape because it's removable tape. But you can take this, you can use washi tape as well, although I am finding I like the painter's tape better. So you can mask off the portion of the sentiment you don't want, ink it up, and then when you get ink all over that tape, you just remove the tape. And then you're, you're sure to have a clean edge to stamp right down on your banner. Let's see if I can do it. I can't really see where I'm stamping. I'm a little low, but we're going to take it because that's what I got. <laughs> I only cut one banner. I don't think I have another one. All right, perfect. So I'm going to take this banner and I am going to adhere it right on the front of my little uh, bag here. Now I'm going to use mini glue dots today. I'm not sure if that's what I put in the supplies, but uh, I, that's what I'm going to use. All right, so let's put a couple little mini glue dots on here. Regular glue dots are dimensionals glue dots. These are dimensionals, not glue dots. Regular size will fit on this, but I found that I just prefer the minis for this particular application. So I'm going to slide my finger in there so I can give that a good push. And so now my banner is on my uh, super cute little treat bag here, gift card holder, whatever you want to call it. It's either one. It's a mini bag that's adorable. All right, so bringing in these dies, I have cut some stars. So I cut a star out of the more Dazzle paper, love that. And Lemon Lime Twist, I believe that one is, and Berry Burst. So when you see the supply list, so I always add the supply list to each of my lives. After the video, you'll see that. You'll just be able to expand the um, show more and scroll down because it'll be a little bit down. And you'll be able to see the complete supply list. So you'll have... Um, Clickable links, you can add anything you need to, the, to your shopping cart and get shopping and get everything you need to recreate the project. Um, you'll also have the cut dimensions. So you'll know exactly what you need to cut to prepare this as well. Now on the first one, I did a little blue star. This one, I changed it out and I did uh, Berry Burst. So this was Azure Afternoon and we're gonna switch it to Berry Burst on this particular one. So I'm gonna bring in 
some more glue dots. You could use liquid glue if you prefer, either will work. So I'm gonna bring in a glue dot here. And if I can grab onto the star, I'm gonna slide it. We're just going to put a little glue dot on the back. And I am going to just lay this down. Mm, how about there? That looks good to me, right? Why not? So that one's flat. Get another glue dot. And we will put our lemon lime twist on. And I'm going to make that one flat as well. So I'm just kind of layering these stars in here. There's not an exact placement for anything. Now, I may slide in a dimensional under that one. I think I'm going to because I've got it sticking up a little more than I expected I was going to. So let's grab a dimensional. I'm using my take your pick, which is not going to be on the supply list because I didn't put that on there. I didn't think I would need it, but I am going to use it to slide a dimensional under here since I have that on that banner that's popped up and hanging off so much. All right, that's on there too. Last but not least, Let's put our little dazzle star down. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I am going to put a couple of mini dimensionals on this. So we'll put a couple of them right there and maybe right there. We'll see if that works out for us. So this is going to pop up a little bit higher than the banner. And then we'll slide this right on. So I've just got these overlapping stars. I just want to make sure I don't cover up my sentiment and that's why I put it down low to the one end not necessarily low here that was accidental <laughs> it would be nice it was a little more centered but I think it's okay but yes down low on that banner so I've got my little cluster of stars cute do you like it what do you guys think will you be making some so you can use any designer paper in any colors and make little fabulous gift cards gift card treat holders Fun. Let's add some more candy into this other one. Need some candy, right? Maybe another gift card. Let's see if I got another gift card handy. Sure, why not? Here's another Stampin' Up one. I'll just plop that right down in there. Nice. Cute, cute, cute. I love them. Yay. Okay, you guys want to see a sneak peek of the Darling Details Cultivated Creativity Kit that we've got coming up? For July, I'm going to slide these over and let you see. So we do, I mentioned this earlier, we do four cards and one not a card project. Oops, I almost grabbed something I wasn't supposed to grab. There we go. I'm getting them. I'm trying to get them down off my wall here. See if I can show you these. And you'll have to ignore, well, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, so I'll slide those over. All right, so here's one. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And of course, we do the insides as well. I'm giving you quick flashes of the inside. Yes, another really pretty one. Just changing up some colors. We're gonna do some masking. This one has got a little bit of a fun surprise in there. And then the fourth card. And then we have a not a card, which is a super cute little um, hand sanitizer. Now, it's not going to have a Christmas hand sanitizer. I bought new ones. That's just what I had in my stash. Um, but I bought some other ones to put down in the packet. So those are our fun projects that we're doing this month for Cultivated Creativity. And I can't tell you about my presentation for Makers Mojo. I'm not allowed to share that just yet with you. But I'm telling you, it's going to be good. And uh, I'm doing some different things than I would normally do. So you might be a little surprised when you see my presentation, right? Yes, all good stuff. Perfect. Oh, good, you're loving it. Yay, 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 yay. Good, 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 good. Yeah, a gift card you could definitely do. Now, you could put this in a little pouch um, and slide it down in here if you didn't want the gift card itself showing. Um, so you could definitely do that. Or you could make a small card to slide in, right? A little note card to slide in. But yes, you could totally make these bigger and put a full-size card in. Now you'd have to play with your paper sizes. So let's see if we can guess that, right? So if that bag finishes three by three, we'll know, right? Oh, it's two inches by two and a quarter. Now, 
this is going to be subjective on the side, on the height, right? So that's two and a quarter. And this one's almost well, like two and an eighth. So you can see they're slightly different, not a lot, but slightly different. And it's all based on the amount that I folded in for that bottom. That's the part that I made the mistake on and we had to backtrack, right? So, um, so you have to play around with it and see. Um, but if we could say it's about a third, a third of the width, right? So if we use the six inch paper and we're getting about a two and maybe a little bit uh, more, um, inch bag, then if you did a 12 by 12, a third of 12 by 12 was four. So you'd have about a four inch bag, right? Ish. Yeah. You guys play with it. Oh, you can't come for Mojo. You'll be in Mexico. Oh, that's so much fun, Susan. Um, so that's up to you on if you still want to join us. Everything is going to, well, while we do all of our presentations live, it's all recorded uh, and it's in a Facebook group. And if you don't do Facebook, we also email out links to each of the recorded presentations. So we do a PDF to go along with each of them. And the presentations, while there's 10 of them, we typically have over 40 examples or samples that we share because we demonstrate a project. So like I would demonstrate this, but then I might have four or five alternates made to show you using other products because sometimes you don't love the exact, like maybe this isn't your favorite stamp set. I love it personally, but if it isn't your favorite stamp set, maybe I show you an alternate that you're like, oh my gosh, I love that one. Right. Right. So let's see, I might have an example of one from a previous, here's a good one to show. I don't have all my samples still, but I've got a couple of them. Most of them are gone, but I can show you an example of what I mean. So one Maker's Mojo, I think this was two Maker's Mojos ago, I think uh, I showed this lovely, I taught how to make this card. This is using a baby wipe technique, right? And one of my alternates I showed was this one with the ice cream the share a milkshake bundle. So just to kind of give you a feel, and I had two others um, that I shared as well using other products. So that's what I mean by that is that we share multiples, um, multiple var variations so that you have, you can use what you have at home. It's not about um, buying a bunch of stuff to be able to craft along with us. It's about um, using what's on your shelves, getting your creative mojo kicking again, right? Because sometimes we get in ruts and we need that inspiration. We need that, you know, it's crafting on steroids, right? So, all right. We'll, we'll miss you if you don't join us. Definitely. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me today. If you're enjoying the content that I'm sharing, definitely give me a thumbs up. Uh, share this with your crafty friends. I'd love to have them join us on Tuesdays and uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't forget you don't miss anything, right? I will have a link in the uh, video description below. You have to show more to expand that will let you join my email list. This is where you go if you don't want to miss out on anything I have going on. I, uh, I do exclusive classes for my email list. Um, like I said, I send out a monthly tutorial bundle um, that are full of fantastic projects as well. So lots of inspiration coming. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I'll talk to you again.